Hi there. I'm Dr. Gerald Evans. I'm the Medical Director of Infection Prevention and Control at Kingston Health Sciences Centre. And today we're going to talk a little bit about variants of viruses that cause COVID-19. So the first question that's come up is how many variants are there out there and how dangerous are they? So uh, certainly a number of variants have come to light and there's going to be more in the future, but there's three at the moment that we're concerned about. Uh, one is a variant from uh, the United Kingdom called B117. The other one is a variant from South Africa, which is called B1351. And then finally, a variant in Brazil that's arisen, which is very, very similar to the South African variant, which is called B1128. So these variants all have somewhat different characteristics. We know the most about B117, the UK uh, variant, uh, and it uh, appears to be more transmissible than the wild type strain that caused most of COVID-19 over the last year. Uh, that means that we have to pay a lot of attention to it because that transmissibility has turned into an increase in cases throughout Europe where it's much more common. The variant from South Africa and the one from Brazil both contain mutations which are a little bit worrisome because they reduce the effectiveness of the protection you get from the COVID-19 vaccines that we currently have out. They're still effective, but we're a little bit worried about the fact that that kind of immunity might not be as optimal as it is for the wild type virus. So both of them pose a potential danger and at the moment they require a lot of close observation. So some of the questions that are coming up relate to uh, our ability to detect these variants and does our current testing actually detect them? So the answer is yes, our current lab-based PCR, which is the main test that we use for finding patients uh, uh, with COVID-19, works very effectively at finding these variants. It doesn't distinguish them very well, but it certainly finds them. The other question is what about rapid tests? So rapid tests are certainly being deployed now. The rapid tests as well seem to be able to detect these variants without too much trouble. The antigen tests may pose a bit of an issue, but we're still waiting to gather evidence to find out if that's the case. So really in conclusion, our current testing uh, setup is uh, going to detect both the wild type virus as well as these new variants. So we're getting a lot of questions about uh, the vaccines and these variants, and is that going to be an issue? So right now, our current vaccines do provide immunity, which would protect you against the variants. Having said that, with some of them, particularly the variants that are arising in South Africa and Brazil, there may be a somewhat diminished immunity, but it's still appreciable. Uh, what does this mean to vaccine development? It may mean in the future, particularly if new variants arise, that we might have to develop a new vaccine. But the great part about that is that some of these new vaccine platforms we're using in order to create vaccines, like the mRNA vaccines, in fact, make it very easily uh, done. You can actually simply change the mRNA template that may take only a few weeks to uh, have one that now matches a new variant uh, that might be circulating. So our ability to rapidly alter our vaccine vaccines to make them more protective should a variant arise that's uh, creating problems is fairly simple these days. Lots of questions also coming up because of the increased transmissibility that's been seen with some variants is, do we have to change what we're doing to protect ourselves from these variants? And the fact of the matter is our current uh, use of physical distancing, hand washing, masks uh, are actually very effective. And we see no reason at the moment to change those. They continue to be effective. Uh, a question's come up about double masking. Should we be double masking in order to prevent that? Some of that really arose from some comments that were made by some notable authorities, and I'm thinking of my colleague, Dr. Anthony Fauci in the United States, who mentioned that in an interview. There's no evidence that double masking is more effective, and really we're gonna wait to sort of see if that uh, pops up as a, as a solution. But right now, our current use of masks, uh, particularly in the medical environment, is very effective. 
There is a reminder though that when you're making a cloth mask, if you're out in the community and using it to prevent transmission, you should really follow the guidelines that are present on websites that are hosted by the Public Health Agency of Canada, as well as the CDC in the United States, which show you how to make a three-layer mask. And the other thing to remember, of course, is keep that mask in good condition. It may need to be washed and cleaned properly, and if it's starting to fall apart, you may need to make another mask or purchase some other ones. So at the moment, our current precautions against COVID-19 remain the same as they've always been over the last year.